Amen. Amen. I, I guarantee you there's been a many, amen, that have said that. Amen. So let's look tonight in the book of Joshua. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Joshua tonight. My, uh, I, I've often called the book of Joshua, Joshua. Amen. <laughs> and my wife told me the other day that there wasn't no L in Joshua. <laughs> amen. I said, that's right. You know, that's right. Amen. <laughs> so, but uh, we're going to look in the book of Joshua tonight. Amen. And the Lord's placed it on our heart. And uh, uh, we've been trying to get to this book for some time. Amen, and that's where we'll be, uh, Lord's will, for a little while in the next several Wednesdays and maybe even some Sunday nights. Try to go through it sort of like we did the book of Nehemiah a while ago back. Amen, and hit some of the high points, amen, in each chapter amen. and see what God, uh, amen, do. Amen, I believe that's where the Lord would have us as a church to be, amen. Uh, and we'll do mostly an uh, introduction tonight uh, to the book of Joshua. Won't get too far into it, uh, maybe through the first eight or nine verses. If, uh, toward the latter part, but we got some groundwork to get to there. Amen. Uh, but we'll read in verse number one. The Bible said, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise. Uh, I thought, why did he tell him to rise? Amen. Well, if you'd have read, read back over in Deuteronomy 34, after Moses died, the children of Israel spent 30 days mourning. They was slump, and they were slumbering, they was mourning, they was broken. But then, he, then the Lord appeared to Joshua, Brother Perry, and he said, Now therefore arise. Amen. He said, It's time to get up, amen, time to move on for the glory of God. And he said this, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan. Uh, they had done come to the edge, amen, of the promised land. Boy, they could see it at a distance, but many of them was content with dwelling on the east side of Jordan. Amen. I mean, they lived in a good land, but it just wasn't the best land they could have had. It wasn't the land that God wanted them to have. It said, and look what he goes on. It said, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, under the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the words here. He said, under the land which I do give them. The land was already theirs. Amen. And he said, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even under the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, he said, in all the land of the Hittites and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Now, when I read that, amen, I go back to Numbers 13 and you'll find that God told this crowd, amen, there's not a man going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Well, they went in and viewed the land, amen, and they saw, they saw some men. <laughs> and they saw them as giants, amen. And you know what? They was afraid to go in and possess the land. And God had done told them, amen, there would not any be able to stand before you. Now look what he goes on and says. He says, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. He said, For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. He said, That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Brother Holt, you know, right there, that's the only time in your King James Bible that that word is mentioned, that word success, Brother Perry. It just simply telling us the importance the only way in this life to have success is to do according to the Word of God. 
I mean, I won't tell you we can build good houses, we can have the finest of vehicles, uh, the best attire to put on, but if we forsake the word of the living God, amen, there will not be a whole lot of success in that, amen. He said, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land. Uh, amen. He said to go in. I, I read that word possess the land. Amen. That word possess is mentioned. I believe it was 24 times in this book, amen, uh, that God was trying to encourage them uh, and urge them to go in and possess the land, amen. He said, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. He said, and unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites, he said, and to have the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, remember the word which Moses thy servant, the Lord commanded you, saying, the Lord your God had given you rest and had given you this land. There it is again. Amen. He said, had given you this land. He said, your wives, your little ones, your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor and help them. Until the Lord had given your brethren rest as he had given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God had given them. Then ye shall return into the land of your possession. Now, I thought about something. not going to say a whole lot about it tonight. Amen. He said, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. I thought about two groups of people there, Brother Ty, and most every church has it, amen, the same here. You got one crowd, amen, that wanted to go possess the land that could not be satisfied on this side of Jordan. And you got another crowd, amen, that says, I'm content, amen, with being on this side, amen. It's got all that we need, amen. We've been saved. We ain't going to hell, amen. But we're going to stay right here, amen. And then you got another crowd that says, I'm not happy here. I'm not satisfied. We got to go in and get the land that God gave us, amen. And you'll find, amen, just as what happened here, uh, those two crowds drifted apart, amen. And they come a time when God separated them, amen. They returned back to the east side and you had a crowd that went on ahead amen and possessed the land that God gave them and notice what he goes on to say here in verse number 16 and they answered Joshua saying all that thou commandest us we will do and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go according to as we hearken unto Moses in all things so we hearken unto thee only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto the words in all that thou commandest him. He shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight. Lord God, for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray that you would make preaching easy. God, you would speak to our hearts, God, from your word. Lord, help us, Lord God, that we might be willing to go in and possess the land that you've given us. Lord God, I pray. Lord, just as the children of Israel did, we'll thank you and give you all the glory for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to bring us up to where we're at tonight uh, by way of introduction and preach on this thought. Oh, don't be content with selling for less than God's best. Amen. Uh, don't settle for any less than God's best. Amen. I want you to notice the children of Israel here. Uh, we want to back up a little while and realize uh, uh, that there was a time, Brother Brad, when they was dwelling down in Egypt. Amen. Uh, they was down there in Egyptian bondage. Uh, they was under the burden of sin. Amen. And God raised up a deliverer. His name was Moses. Amen. Uh, Moses, amen, God raised up, God protected him, God preserved him, and God put it on his heart to go down before Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel, Brother Perry, up out of the land of Egypt, amen. That crowd came up out of the land of Egypt, they was a happy, they was a happy, amen. They was relieved from the brick and mortar, they come up out of the land of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, which is a picture of salvation, amen. Brother Perry, they was glad to get out of Egypt, amen, uh, but you'll find when they come up out of Egypt uh, it was never God's will for them to be content uh, with wandering around in the wilderness, amen. 
Amen. Hey, they was just a few days journey. Amen. I believe if you'll read the book of Deuteronomy, you'll find out 11 days to be exact. Amen. Uh, from the time that they left up out of Egyptian bondage uh, to get over into the land of Canaan should have been about 11 days journey. Amen. Uh, but you'll find, Brother Perry, this crowd, uh, uh, when they come up out of there, uh, they were satisfied. Amen. Uh, no longer being in Egypt. Now, I want you to know this tonight. Uh, here in the Word of God, I want to tell you in Deuteronomy, uh, God had more. Uh, God had more in store, Brother Brad, uh, for the nation of Israel uh, than just coming up out of Egypt. Amen. Uh, God wanted a whole lot more for them. Can I tell you tonight, dear friend, uh, uh, God's got a whole lot more in store for you uh, uh, than just getting you out of sin. Amen. And saving your soul from hell, friend. Uh, God's got a whole lot more than that. Amen. I'm afraid we become so content uh, with living, amen, uh, just being saved. Uh, but here you'll find in Deuteronomy 6.23, uh, and he brought us out, amen, from thence. Now look what he said, Brother Brad. He said that he might bring us in, amen, uh, to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers, amen. I thought about what they said there. He said, you know what? Uh, he brought us out of Egypt, amen, uh, but he wants to bring us in, amen. I want to tell you, friend, there's been a many, a many folks in our day uh, that have come up out of Egypt, uh, but they never have been brought in uh, to that land of Canaan, amen. A uh, land that's flowing with milk and honey, amen. Uh, so content we are, amen, uh, to wander in the wilderness. I thought about uh, what he said in Numbers 13. I want you to take you over there for a moment, amen. In Numbers chapter number 13, you're going to have to bear with us, amen. Uh, we got a whole lot of reading to do uh, to get us caught up to the book of John. Joshua, we'll find uh, in verse number 16, uh, uh, you'll find that what's going on here, uh, that they're at the edge of the promised land. Uh, they're no longer in Egypt, Brother Perry. They thank God have come up out of Egypt. Amen. I say praise the Lord. Amen. That's something worth shouting about tonight if you've come up out of Egypt. Now, I want you to know, uh, but that wasn't all God wanted for them. Uh, they're at the edge of the promised land. Amen. It's inside. Amen. And you know what happens? Moses, amen, uh, sin out 12 spies. Amen. You'll find that in verse 16. He said these, uh, in, in Numbers 13 verse 16, these are the names of, of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshia, uh, the son of Nun, Joshua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land. Amen. What it is. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, they went up and saw the land. Amen. Uh, but notice what happened happens here. It said, and the people that dwell it therein, whether they be strong or weak, uh, few or many. And what the land is that dwell in, he said, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that dwell in, whether in tents or strongholds. Uh, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, uh, whether they be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Uh, now the time was the same as the first, first ripe grapes. Uh, he said, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen he said unto Rahab he said and as men came to Hamath and they ascended by the south and came to Hebron where am I he said Shemia and Temi the children of Anak were now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt and they came unto the brook of Eschol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and they bury it between two upon a staff. Amen. Now you're talking about a cluster of grapes. Amen. It took two of them to put them there. I want to tell you, friend, that's the kind of land that God wants his people living in. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, they went down and they cut the cluster of grapes. They put it on a pole between two of them. Amen. And they begin to march out. Amen. And they bear it between two on a staff and they brought one of the pomegranates and of, one, and of the fish amen and the place of the brook was called the brook Escol he said because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from this and look what he said in verse 25 and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days amen uh, now brother Holt then went down into the land and for 40 days amen uh, they was over in Canaan amen they was searching
and out the land and all of a sudden uh, uh, they returned, amen, uh, back across Jordan they go, amen, and back over there to where the rest of the children of Israel were. And boy, can you see them when they come marching up out of there uh, with a big old cluster of grapes uh, uh, between the poles. Can you see the excitement of the people, amen, and they're thinking about, man, uh, uh, that's got to be a good land. I ain't never seen any grapes like that before. I have never saw a pomegranate like that. Uh, there's nothing that can pair to it. Uh, but my friend, all of a sudden, uh, I want you to notice the majority report uh, that come back up out of there with them. Amen. Now, I wanted you to know, friend, uh, there's some things that's worth fighting for. Amen. And it said, and they returned from searching the land after 40 days. Uh, and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel under the wilderness of Paran and to Kedish and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. Amen. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Amen. Uh, can you imagine what they said? They said, Moses, I want you to know uh, we went over to that land you sent us to. It's ever been a what God said it was. Amen. It's a land of plenty. I'm telling you, the fruit is better than we've ever had. He said, But, amen, we got some problems. Amen. I want you to know this, friend. That old devil likes to throw those in on you. Amen. He likes to show you the problems uh, instead of the fruit. Amen. I notice what he goes on to say. It said, in, uh, uh, it said Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Uh, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Amen. Notice the majority came back up out of there. They said, you know what? That land's just like God said it was. Uh, uh, but there are some giants down there. Uh, they're a whole lot bigger than we are. They're a whole lot stronger than we are. Uh, we ain't got a whole lot of chance of taking this land amen and you know what they were saying uh, yes that would be a better land uh, but I would be a whole lot better off being satisfied uh, with where we at amen uh, because we don't got that kind of fight over here uh, we don't have that kind of battle uh, you'll notice something about the book of Joshua amen it's a book of warfare amen and boy I want to tell you friend they said you know what I think it'd be better off we just stay put amen uh, we had her all we're not in Egypt no more, amen. Uh, we're not over there in bondage any longer. Uh, we ought to just be satisfied, amen. I want to tell you, friend, that's about where the majority is in our day, amen. I want to tell you, friend, the first little bit of opposition and the first little bit of resistance that we face, amen. Uh, we back down and be content and satisfied with dwelling on this side of Jordan, uh, out of the land of Canaan, amen, when that ain't what God never intended for us, amen. Uh, you'll find, amen, uh, but I want you to know the majority brought back a report but so did the minority amen, amen. Uh, you'll find in verse number 30 and Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it amen for we are well able to overcome it amen I want to tell you friend old, old Caleb said you know what hold up a minute amen he said y'all might see a bunch of giants he said but guess what I see God amen he said I see God amen in that big old cluster of grapes, amen. That pomegranate, amen. That's a land, amen. And it's just like what God said, amen. I want to tell you, friend, uh, but we had some issues here. As he began to tell them, notice what he says here in verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Amen. You know what? That's a lie out of hell. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, any time uh, that God, amen, is in the midst, amen, there's none stronger than him. How uh, greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Amen. And I want you to know what he goes on to tell them. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they searched under the children of Israel, saying the land uh, through which we have gone to search it, 
is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, of which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Amen. I want you to notice, Brother Perry, uh, when they brought back that report, uh, guess what happened? Amen. Uh, the people chose to go with the majority. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, uh, the majority ain't always right. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, uh, the majority majority is not always right but the people says guess what we ain't going to go over there and fight with that crowd we're going to stay back over here but guess what happens here and the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God that we had died in the wilderness amen I want you to notice that's a sad state to be in folk uh, uh, my friend when the congregation began to cry out and said you know what we'd have been better off uh, if we'd have just died in Egypt uh, we'd have been better off if we'd have died in the wilderness amen uh, than going out there fighting that crowd amen but notice what he said and wherefore he said the Lord he said brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey were it not better for us to return into Egypt and they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were born to search the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, he will bring us into this land to give it us a land. Amen him that floweth with milk and honey I want you to notice my friend the wilderness wonder uh, that, that coming up out of Egypt was a picture of salvation uh, but that wilderness wondering brother Ty you know what it's a picture of it's a picture of a carnal Christian life amen it's a picture of that individual uh, that's been saved by the grace of God they've come up out of Egypt amen uh, but you know what brother Ledford they are satisfied uh, with where they at uh, they never really do get to digging in the word of God uh, they never do really have a prayer life. Uh, they never really do have any kind of commitment uh, to serve the Lord. Amen. Uh, they're going nowhere but in circles all the time. Uh, and not a whole lot of effort put forth uh, uh, to live for God. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, God uh, don't want you selling for less than his best. Amen. He's not satisfied uh, uh, with us being on this side. Amen. He wants us to go in and possess the land. Amen. He's already gave us a land amen and he says I want you to go possess it amen he said it's already been given to you it's yours for the taking all you got to do is go after it amen uh, don't be satisfied uh, where you at amen I want to tell you friend that's about where we most are today uh, we satisfied with a whole lot less uh, than what God's got for us amen he's got a whole lot more amen and he's telling them just get up and go after it amen I want you to know something, friend. Uh, 40 years later, had her wandering around in the wilderness. You know what happened, friend? Uh, wandering in the wilderness 40 years. Uh, that generation died off, amen. If you'll read the rest of chapter 14, uh, they died out, amen. And the next generation entered into Canaan, amen. I want you to know, friend, I don't want to die out, amen, uh, before we get to Canaan, amen. I want to tell you, friend, uh, that Canaan life, amen, is the best life. And you know what in your life, you sit in this building, you, spiritually you're in one of three places. You're either still in Egypt, uh, dead in the trespass of your sin, and you need to be saved by the grace of God. I'm telling you, friend, there is a God in heaven uh, that loves you enough to send his son uh, to die on an old rugged cross. Uh, and my friend, you can be saved. Uh, you don't have to die in Egypt. Uh, you don't have to go to hell. Uh, but my friend, if you're in the wilderness tonight, uh, wandering around in circles, uh, uh, God don't want you staying there. Amen. He wants you to rise and get up and go possess the land. Amen. How that is put before you. Thank God. Think about it. Amen. How that Canaan. Amen. 
is a picture of that victorious life. Amen. Of that abundant Christian life. It's not a picture of heaven. Amen. I want to tell you when I get to heaven, I have fought my last battle. Amen. How the battles will all be behind. But friend, the whole time how they was in Canaan, they were still a fighting. Amen. I want you to notice how the first time you find Joshua how back over in Exodus 17, he was fighting with the Malachites. Amen. And Joshua came in the picture fighting and he went out the picture fighting. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, just because you're fighting, I don't mean you're not doing something. Amen. Oh, friend, you'll find here, uh, and, and that, that is a victorious life. That is exciting. And what it's one that's growing. It's one that's glowing. It's one, my friend, uh, you're no longer wandering in the wilderness. Uh, but my friend, you're conquering a few giants, amen, over in Canaan, thank God. I'm telling you, friend, uh, you can't be satisfied uh, wandering in the wilderness, friend, when there's some giants that we need conquering, amen. amen. Think about it. Oh, you know what God's saying through all that? Don't settle for less than best. Right. Don't be satisfied where you at. Amen, but we think about it. What brought us to this in, jo in Joshua chapter number 1? Now, we done got here, amen, to Joshua chapter 1. He said, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, and Moses' men are saying, You know what? We got a problem now. You know what? For 40 years, uh, Moses has led this people, amen, up out of Egypt for 40 years, amen. They had wandered around in the wilderness going nowhere. And now all of a sudden, amen, uh, because of his disobedience, uh, God said you ain't going to enter into it. I want to tell you, friend, you won't ever live that abundant life as long as you live in a disobedient life, amen. And old Moses, friend, uh, God said because of your disobedience, uh, you're not going to enter into Canaan, amen. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, uh, God won't ever let you go uh, to that victorious life as long as you contend uh, with disobeying him. And friend, we'll find that he said, no, you're not going, Amen. So we know what happened. He died. Amen. And you know what? They mourned. Amen. For 30 days. Amen. How they was broken. Amen. How there was a problem. But you know what? Although the God of Moses, Moses was dead, how the God of Moses wasn't dead. Amen. And you know what God said? He said, Joshua, I got something for you. It's time to get up. Amen. And go possess the land. Amen. And notice what he said there. Uh, Brother John, he said, I want you to go. Uh, but I want you and all uh, the people to go, amen. He said, I don't want you to leave any behind. I want you to get up and go, amen. How to possess the land, amen, that's before you, amen. Uh, you'll find, amen, through that, uh, there were some things that had to take place, amen. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, uh, thou and all this people under the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, amen. Uh, Brother Lever, he said, I've already gave it to them. It's already theirs. All you got to do is get up, amen. I want to tell you, friend, if you ever get a word from God, you can count on it, amen. God said, amen. I gave it to them, amen. All that I had to do, amen, is be willing to get up and cross Jordan and march into that Canaan land, amen. But you know what? They were satisfied, amen, with less than God's best, amen. I want you to know what, friend, if you're going to get there, you know how you're going to get there? You're going to have to do it by faith, amen. Amen. Uh, you know what he said there in verse number two? <coughs> he said this, amen. He said, and all this people under the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. You know what they had to do? They had to just have some faith. You know what, Brother Brad? The Bible still says the just shall live by faith. Uh, you know what? The, uh, God had already gave them the land. The land was already theirs. You Look in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want to show you something, amen. All they needed, amen, to obtain the land was some faith. Amen. In Deuteronomy, <coughs> chapter number 6, I believe it is, and verse number 10 and 11. Deuteronomy 6, verse 10 and 11, yeah. He said, and it shall be 
When the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, uh, vineyards and olive trees uh, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. He said, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Amen. You know what I find out there, Brother Brad? He's telling them, Amen, I've already given you the land. Now look in Joshua chapter number one. One in verse 3, he said, Every place, amen, that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, uh, that, that have I given you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness unto Lebanon. You know what he said there, Miss Betty? He said, you're going to have to have faith in the promises of God. Amen. Uh, God's already told him. He said, I gave you the land. Uh, the land is yours. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, if God said it in this blessed old book, uh, it's a promise of his. Amen. And he's looking for somebody to believe him. And how some faith, amen. Notice my friend, that promise, amen. That promise, Brother Perry, he said, in chapter number 1 in verse 13, he said, remember the word which Moses which Moses, thy servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God hath given you Amen. Had given you rest and had given you this land. Amen. In verse number 15, he says the same thing again. Amen. In verse 11 and 15, uh, that God had given you this land. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, if we ever go possess the land that gave us, uh, Brother Perry, we're going to have to start having some faith in the promises of God. Amen. If God said it, amen, you can count on it. All Israel had to do to possess that land was get up and go to it. Amen. God already told them, ain't anybody going to stand before you. You know what we see? We see the battle and we back up. We see the fight and we stop. I want to tell you, you won't ever have anything worth having without fighting for it. Amen. You'll find not only faith in the promise of God, but look at faith in the power of God. He said there in chapter number 1 and verse number 5, uh, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You know, Brother, Brother Brad, what he said, you know what? We're going to have to have faith in the power of God. I want you to think about this. In creation, do you know what God did? He brought forth something out of nothing. Amen. I'm telling you in salvation, you know what God done? He brought forth life out of death. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, I, he can, if he can do that, guess what else he can do? He can do whatever we need him to do. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, we're just going to have to have some faith in the power of God. If God's with us, amen, and God's for us, I want to tell you, friend, he'll give us some victory. Amen. He said, don't be satisfied. We got, you know what I wrote this down? Living, vic, living in victory is not your responsibility. It is your response to God's ability. Now, it's not your responsibility to live victorious. It's actually you just responding to God's ability. See, you can't do it, but he can through you. We get, so we get so tied up trying to do it. We trying to do it. We can try all we want to, but we ain't going to do it till we let him do it through us. Amen. Amen. He's going to have to be the one to do it through us. We trying to do it, and we can't do it. We giving up. I'm telling you, we, we, we wanting to quit. We, but you know what God said? Quit depending so much on you and start depending on me. That's what he wants us to do, brother. Amen. But you think about this. What about faith in the presence of God? He said, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Amen. I want you to know, friend, you can count on him. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. It don't matter where you're at. It don't matter who you're surrounded by. It don't matter what you're going through. I'm telling you, you need to learn to have a little bit of faith in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, Brother Perry, he'd be with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. Oh, friend, we're going to have to learn. To have some faith. But I want you to know something. If you want God's best, then you're going to face some giants. And you're going you're gonna to face some walled cities. Amen. You, ain't got, you know what? God gave them the land, but notice he didn't just place them in it. He said, I'm going to give you the land, but it's up to you to go get it. It's up to you to go in there and take it. Amen. Now think about this. 
He told Joshua that I'll be with you. Now, let me show you something. Look in Joshua chapter number five. Brother Ty talked about this the other night. You know what? He was, he was, in chapter number five, God was proving what he told him. Chapter five and verse number 13. Remember what he said? As I was with Moses, I'll be with you, Joshua. Chapter 5 and verse number 13, look what he said. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld, behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Unto him art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord am, am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servants? And the captain of the host uh, the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Amen. You know what God done? God showed him, brother. He said, I want you to have a little faith in my presence. And he showed up, brother, over there in the midst of the battle. Amen. Can I tell you where he'll show up in your life? In the midst of the battle. Right in the middle of it. He'll show up. Amen. If we ain't careful, amen, we won't recognize him. Not only by faith, but notice... It was also by a following. He told them there in verse number 7, in verse number 8, he said, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all thy law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For thence thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Brother, you know what I found out? If, you, if you're going to have God's best, then you're going to have to do more than have some faith. You're going to have to follow. You know what that Bible said? Faith without works is dead. We can say we got faith all day, but you know where the truth of the matter is when it's put into practice. When it's, you know what he told him, Brother Perry? He said, you're going to have to follow. I want you to notice. If you're going to follow, he gave them a precaution against straying. He said, turn not to the left nor to the right. He said, Brother Perry, he said, I want you to be careful not to stray. He said, I want you to be careful, amen. I want you to don't waver from the course. Don't get off course. Stay on a straight path. He said, and I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus, amen. I'm telling you, friend, tonight, if we're going to follow him, and we're going to possess the land, then we're going to have to stay on course. Amen. We're going, to have to, we're going to have to take heed to his precaution not to stray. Amen. You know what he said? Also, he said, not only if we're going to do that, amen, he gave them a prescription for success in verse number 8. That's the only place that that word appears in the Bible, brother. And you know what I found out? He said there, speak. He, he said there, the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. You know what? If we're going to have success in this life, we're going to have to speak the Word of God. You think about it. Brother Perry, I found in my life, and you can see, y'all know this truth, the more I talk about Him, the more I talk about the Word of God, the more I talk about what God's doing in my life, the, the less I talk about everything else. And the more I talk about Him and His work and what He's doing, amen, and what I've seen Him do and what I've witnessed Him do, amen, the more I want to do for Him. And the less I talk about him, the less I want to do. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, that's the truth tonight. Amen. He said, if you're going to have any success, amen, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to take the prescription and you're going to have to refuse, amen, uh, to quit speaking the word of God. Amen. It's going to have to be in your heart. It's going to have to be in your mouth. But can I tell you not only that, you're going to have to do more than speak the word. You're going to have to study the word. Amen. He said there, meditate therein day and night. You know what happens, Brother Smallwood, when you meditate on something, that's something that you're thinking on, that's something that you turn over and over in your mind, amen I want to tell you friend, how good is the word of God, amen, when you read it one time, uh, but it's so much better amen, uh, when you turn it over and over, amen, I want to tell you one word, uh, uh, turned over and over again, is a whole lot better than a whole book, amen, uh, that you don't even give much thought to, uh, I want to tell you, we'd better get back to the day uh, to study and to show ourselves approved unto God, a uh, workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth uh, if we're going to have any success uh, we're going to have to learn to meditate Amen. and study the word of God but brother Ty said it's going to have to get more than that he said they're going to have to be a submitting to the word notice what he said uh, to do according to all that is therein 
Amen. He said, boy, you can read it. And you can talk about it. He said, but where the rubber meets the road. He said, you can even study it. But where the rubber meets the road is what do you do? You know what I really believe? I, I believe that belief determines behavior. Amen. Believe, what you believe will determine your behavior. If you really believe something, your behavior will prove it out. Amen. And that's what he's telling them. He said, I want you to be real cautious. Amen. To submit yourself to the word of God. If God said it, just do it. Amen. Amen. You know what would be good, amen, if we'd just get back to doing what God said. Amen. Quit trying to make excuses for it and just do what God said. Can I say not only that, amen, I want to give you a couple things here and we'll be done. There's a promise to strengthen them. You'll keep telling them, you'll notice he kept telling them, he said, be strong in the Lord. Be thou strong and very courageous in the Lord. What is saying, Joshua? You know what? You're not going to be able to do this alone. Joshua, you ain't going to be able to go in. And these people, you are not going to go in there and take the land by yourself. He said, you're going to have to be strong in the Lord. You're going to have to let the Lord do it for you. Amen. You're going to have to be a willing vessel to let God use you to go in and possess that land. And Brother Perry, sometimes God just wants to use you. Can I tell you, church, tonight, sometimes God wants to use you. But he'll only use those that's available and those that are dependable. Amen. By faith, by following, but also, amen, by fighting. Can I tell you, Brother Brad, you know what I saw? I looked it up. First time I found Joshua in the Word of God was over in Exodus 17. You know what he was doing? He was fighting the Malachites. Amen. He was over there fighting, Brother Perry, that good fight. And I want to tell you, when I see him in this book here, I see him fighting some more battles. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna not settle for less than God's best in your life, you're gonna have to do some fighting. You won't do it easy. They're gonna be opposition. Can I tell you, friend, everywhere they went. You know why I thought, brother, when I first started reading the Bible, I thought, man, if they just get into Canaan, the fight will be over. But you know what? As soon as they crossed Jordan, they was in the midst of another battle. As soon as they entered into the Canaan land, there was another battle. The battle never stopped. Can I tell you tonight, friend, if you're going to live a victorious Christian life, if you're going to live that abundant Christian life, you know what? You're going to have a daily fight against the flesh. You're going to have a daily fight against the world. You're going to have a daily fight against the devil, amen. And it don't matter how much you read your Bible. It don't matter how much you pray. It don't matter how close to God you get. And I will tell you this, amen. And Brother Ty, there's some others, amen, that I've heard say this, amen. The closer you try to get to God, the greater the fight's going to be. The more you determine in your heart, I'm going to get closer to Him. The more you determine I'm going to get close to God, amen. I'm going to do more for Him. I'm just going to forget about everything else around me. I'm going to go at her, God. I'm going to tell you went for what friend that's when the devils out of hells come out amen that's when it all comes up that's when everything that as the, this flesh can throw at you comes amen now, does your flesh ever get in your way amen I'm telling you mine does amen I'm telling you friend it's a daily fight amen now, just to read the word of God amen you say oh preacher amen come on now now you pastor a church I want to tell you friend it's a daily fight against this stinking rotten flesh of mine how to read the word of God amen now, that old Bible will be sitting around over there. That old flesh says, I ain't got time. Uh, but it's got time for everything else under the sun. Amen. I got time to do this. I got time to do that. Uh, but not time to be spiritual. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, if we ever get past the flesh, that's when the world shows up. And the, you know what the Lord said? He said, marvel not that the world hates you. Amen. It hated me. Amen. It's going to hate you. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, if you try to live for God, you will won't do it without this world hating you. Amen. Amen. Yes, you, the world's not going to be no friend of yours if you try to do it living for the Lord. Amen. Brother, I want to tell you, friend, this old world takes notice. Amen. You know what? I, I was down in the city of Greenville today. I went down there and talked to them. Amen. I was thinking about relocating business over here. And, you know, I go in there and talk to them. And, and I was asking some questions, amen, in the, to the mayor. And she says to me, she says, I, she, I was telling her where we pastored at, and she said, oh, that's that church down there that likes to put those racial things on the sign, ain't it? Oh. I, I said, yeah, no, I said, I ain't seen none of it since I've been there anyway, I'll tell you that. But what I said is this, 
You can put Jesus loves you out there, and I won't tell you that world ain't going to like it. Amen. Amen. You can put John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Amen. And you know what? If it's any kind of conviction, they ain't going to like it a whole lot. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to say nothing. All you got to do is try to live for Jesus. Amen. And make up your mind. I'm going to lift up his banner. I'm going to live for him for the glory of God. And that world's going to hate you. Amen. But I want to tell you, friend, outside that, you're going to have to fight that devil. Amen. That devil won't let you do it easy. He'll show up every chance he gets. He'll come knocking on your door. He'll give you every excuse under the sun. Amen. But I want to tell you, friend, I want to encourage you tonight. I Don't be satisfied. I would dwell on this side of Jordan. Amen. I go out of the land that God gave you. Amen. And possess it. Amen. It's a land. Amen. That's flowing with milk and honey. Can I tell you something friend this crowd I want to close right here this crowd went over there brother I want to tell you they went down into the land 40 days they saw everything that it was they saw amen the fruits of it Hey, you know what? You know what that tells me? They got a little taste of it. Amen. Uh, they knew what it was like. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, why in the world, amen, had you have tasted the good land? Why in the world, amen, had you had victory? Amen. Would you ever want to come out? Amen. Why in the world would you get to a place where you say, oh, man, we can't take it? Can I tell you, they lived there 40 days. You know what they were saying, sister? We can't have that land. It's already occupied. They had it for 40 days. Amen. They had it 40 days. They did pretty good for 40 days, didn't they? Amen. But you know what the problem was? They got tired of fighting. Seen too many in our day get tired of fighting. Amen. I mean, get tired of fighting. I want to tell you, friend, don't give up. Amen. Don't let the world get you down. Don't let the flesh and the devil take you out. Amen. Don't get tired of fighting. Amen. I want to tell you, friend, you know what Caleb said? He said, wait a minute. He said, I want you to know. You might see a bunch of giants over there, but I see God in all this, amen. You know what? We was down there for 40 days. I got, you know what? Uh, that thing of grace between them two men there on that pole that says that I got to go back. It says I got to have more. It says there's more where that come from. And you know what he said? We got to go and possess the land. You know what? If you've ever tasted it, if you've ever got a taste in your Christian life, of living in victory. Amen. If you've ever, amen, got through wandering in the wilderness and found a little taste of Canaan, you won't ever be satisfied walking in the wilderness. Amen. I want to tell you deep down in your soul tonight, you know, amen, you once had a taste of it. You know that for 40 days you lived there. You know there's a time in your life when you loved God. You know there's a time in your life when you studied the Word of God, when you dug in the Bible, you meditated on the Word of God. It was your all in all. It was your everything, amen. It was a time in your life where you prayed, amen. You'd get a hold of God. You'd pray for your family. You'd pray for your friends, amen. You didn't want them to go to hell. Hell's a time when you was committed wholly to the work of God. I don't be satisfied, amen, over on the wrong side of Canaan. You got a little taste. You remember what it was like when, when you would glance up and you'd see God working in your folks' life. Remember when you used to really dig in the Word of God and Brother Perry, you'd find something in there that was a nugget that you said, I got to tell somebody. I got I to gotta get this to somebody. Oh, you know what? Maybe the reason we ain't getting any nuggets is because we ain't digging like we used to. Oh, Amen. I'm talking about, man, you get a, go on and get them tools back out. Amen. Go on. When's the last time you opened a strong concordance? You said, there you go, preacher. I want to When's the last time you opened up a strong's, amen, and found something to chew on, amen, and found something to meditate on, and found something, amen, to feed that dry soul of yours. I want to tell you, friend, how we get satisfied uh, with that leanness of soul, amen. I just dig in the Word of God. We was riding up the road a couple weeks ago. Last week, go hunting me and Brother Smallwood. He ain't been back in church, amen, but a month, amen, two months, amen. 
a little while, amen, a little longer than that, I'm sure. Uh, but you know what he said? I ain't asked him nothing. He said, you know what I did? I got out there strong and carded, say amen, and started looking up some of them words, amen. And I said, praise God, amen. You know what that tells me, amen. Somebody studying the word of God. You know what else he said? He said, I found out a lot of them words mean exactly what I thought it did, amen. I want to tell you, friend, if you'll just dig in the word of God and let God fill your soul and let the fires of heaven burn again and not be satisfied uh, with blessed and what God's best is for you. You know what? He brought you out to bring you in. He brought you out of Egypt to bring you into Canaan. Amen. He didn't bring you out of Egypt to wander in the wilderness all your life. Amen. Say the truth. Brother Ty, say the truth. Many of them, many of them died. Matter of fact, God told them when they started murmuring, he said, your carcasses is going to fall in the wilderness. And you know what happened? Their carcasses fell in the wilderness. You know what we would be good to do today? Just make up our minds. Not to be satisfied with less than God's best. I mean, you know what they, they, they realized, Brother Brad? I'm trying to close. I'll help you here in a minute. Listen. You think about this. They got to the place where... The wilderness was enough. The wilderness was enough for them. You know what, Sister Denise? It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't Egypt. They is out of Egypt. You know what? They have what was it, leeks and melons and onions and all that down in Egypt. God brought them up out of Egypt, gave them a little manna. And you know what? They were satisfied. And they could have had so much more. Many of that generation died and never got what God intended them to get. You know what, Brother Ty? You correct me if I'm wrong, but when they came out of Egypt, the whole purpose of it was to go to Canaan. That was the whole, the whole purpose was to go to Canaan. But they, when they left out of Egypt, they got satisfied. Because it was, wasn't like it was in Egypt. It's better than they ever had it. <laughs> can I tell you, you can have it a whole lot better than that. Amen. And when they had it better than they ever had it, Brother Ty, they got content and they settled down. They were not a whole lot better off than they was when they was in Egypt. Now I want to say this tonight. I want you to listen. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Amen. Being saved is good. Best thing that ever happened to you. But you know what I found out? There's a lot of saved folks wandering in the wilderness with an insurance policy of I ain't going to hell. And they are so satisfied with going around and around in circles and never getting up and going possessing the land that God gave them. Amen, Don't be satisfied. You get you to stand with us tonight. We'll get Brother Abner to come play something tonight. Maybe you want to pray. You think about, boy, there's so much in the book of Joshua. You think about it, how God said, we've got to get to Canaan. Moses died. You know what I found out? Sometimes God has to remove people out of your life.